Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Well, we all know Anand Gopal as the author of No Good Men Among the Living, a masterpiece of foreign reporting that presents a searing indictment of the U.S. war in Afghanistan, and the winner of this year's Ridenhauer, as well as a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize and the National Book Award. But you might be less familiar with other facts about Anand's remarkably varied career. Though we're close friends and colleagues, I'm always learning about new and weirdly impressive accomplishments, a few of which I'll tell you about, and please feel free to tweet them under the hashtag AnandGopalFacts. <laughs> so this is not actually Anand's first book. He's the author of the 2004 text, Quantum Theory for the Rest of Us, <laughs> whose Amazon page describes it as a clear, straightforward introduction to the mysterious science of quantum mechanics. That's, among other things, well-suited for self-study. So check it out. Uh, now, while the rest of us might be satisfied with quantum uh, mechanics, Anand is also a successful inventor with several uh, successful patents and one pending on a new and incrementally improved method of flossing one's teeth, the details of which I'm not at liberty to share, but it's entirely true. So Anand began his career as a broke freelance war correspondent back in 2008 in Afghanistan when he was living in a building in Kabul where the toilets would freeze in the winter, being fed rice and beans by a landlord who would later become governor of Wardak province. Uh, lacking the means to afford a car and driver, Anand would often ride tandem on a cheap Chinese motorcycle behind his fixer Hamid, sometimes setting out at night from Kabul into the mountains after hearing reports of an airstrike that had caused civilian casualties, a scene that always made me picture that one in the film Dumb and Dumber when Lloyd and Harry set out for Aspen on a scooter. Now, I didn't meet Anand until the summer of 2010 in the basement of the Gandamak, a popular expat bar in Kabul. Um, despite the fact that he was a correspondent then for the Wall Street Journal and that he was wearing an ill-fitting suit, Anand didn't strike me as a typical newspaper reporter, an impression he confirmed by quitting soon after. At the time, it seemed like an odd career move. President Obama's surge was in full swing, and along with it, there was an enormous, if fleeting, media frenzy. But Anand was looking for something more incisive than the patriotic coverage of military embeds and clashes between Washington and Karzai that were typical of news coverage then. He was searching for a more fundamental explanation for the troubling contradictions that had become apparent in the war, perhaps not as fundamental as quantum mechanics, but something that would nonetheless care, account for how and why the U.S. mission carried the seeds of its own defeat. The fruit of that gutsy move is, of course, no good men among the living, uh, in my biased opinion, it's the seminal contribution towards a revisionist history of the American war, one that locates the causes of a renewed and escalating conflict, not in a lack of U.S. troops and resources, nor in cross-border meddling by Pakistan, but in the brutal and misguided counterterrorism strategy adopted by the U.S. military and its warlord allies after the 2001 invasion, which proceeded from a fatal arrogance and disregard for human rights and the rule of law and continued under the name of counterinsurgency. To give one example, Anand shows how special forces raids were responsible for driving much of the Taliban's leadership across the border to Pakistan after they had already accepted defeat and returned to their communities. He convincingly shatters the myth of the good war. And while these are, of course, arguments that others have made and have gathered force as the public has become increasingly skeptical and weary of American misadventures abroad, what makes the book so persuasive is its rich characters and engrossing narrative, the product of meticulous reporting from the front lines. Anyone who reads this book will come away remembering Gila, John Muhammad, and Mullah Cable. Anand has done something truly remarkable. He's foregrounded both American power and Afghan lives. Congratulations, Anand Gopal, on winning this year's Ridenauer Prize. Thank you.